The Bible says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Matthew 12, 37 In this book you will learn to let this divine power flow through your mind, body, business, and all other phases of your life, so that you need no longer live a life of limitation, lack and difficulties, but will rise up like an eagle with the wings of thought, feeling, imagination and faith to the realm of unlimited resources, dominion and joy. As you read this book, you will realize more and more that this mystic, wonder-working power is within your own mind, and you can begin to use it immediately, as it is responsive to your thought. This power is stronger than a laser beam, hydrogen, atomic or nuclear missiles, and more potent than all the energies and explosives in the whole world. It is the power of the infinite, or God, unlimited and inexhaustible. When you have read a few chapters of this book, you will recognize how men and women have made conscious contact with this power and set it operating in their businesses, home lives and financial affairs. All the wonderful results they achieved can be yours also. I urge you to study this book and to apply the methods of scientific prayer elaborated on herein. As you do, I feel absolutely convinced that you will make use of this miracle working power that will banish confusion, misery, lack, melancholy and failure. It will sever you from emotional and physical bondage and place you on the royal road to the fulfillment of your fondest dreams. The instructions given are in ordinary everyday language, the same as you find in your daily papers periodicals, and current magazines. The unique feature of this book is its down-to-earth practicality. Here you are presented with simple mental and spiritual formulas which you can apply in your workaday world. It is your right to have all the money you need. You're here to lead a full and happy life. You should have all the money you need to do what you want to do when you want to do it, some people avoid using the word money in their conversation. They speak of supply and abundance and opulence. Although what they really mean is money, they have old, weird concepts and think it is wrong to desire money. This makes no sense and is very unreasonable. Realize money is good and very good. It is God's way of maintaining the economic health of the nation. You are here to expand and unfold spiritually, mentally, financially, intellectually and in all other ways. You should surround yourself with beauty, luxury and all the other good things of life. See money in its true significance as a symbol and medium of exchange. Money means freedom from want. It means beauty, abundance, refinement, luxury and the good life. Money has taken many forms down through the ages, consisting of such objects as salt, cattle, sheep, beads, and trinkets of various kinds. Whatever form money takes, you will always have plenty by using the law of your mind in the right way. How he created a steady flow of money in his life. Some years ago, a young teller in the bank said to me, how can I make more money? How can I do what I want to do? I replied by giving him a simple explanation and pointing out to him that his habitual thinking formed definite paths and tracks in his subconscious mind and that he could have all the money he needed if he directed his mind and inner speech correctly. I stressed the point that his inner speech is the cause of all the outer experiences in his life. I asked him how he would think, speak and act if he already had the money he was seeking. I suggested that he begin his inner conversation along this line. I have a beautiful home. It is wonderful. I am on a trip around the world. I have a beautiful new Cadillac. I'm studying economics at Rutgers University. 
This was his regular inner conversation to himself while on the way to work, while in the bank, while shaving, or while in the restaurant. He never denied what he inwardly affirmed. All these things came to pass. He is now making far more money than the president of the bank. Money is circulating freely in his life, and he has accomplished all the things he set out to do. He was sent to a special course in economics at Stonia, Graduate School of Banking, Rutgers University. This banker's inner speech or conversations were based on the premise that he already had all these things. They were real in the sense that they were a thought image in his mind, and you must possess anything you want first in your mind, since all transactions take place there. He kept his eye on his goals and objectives, realizing and knowing that his inner speech or conversation must manifest on the screen of space. You must establish the mental equivalent of everything you want in your life. Think of what you want with interest. Your thought induces emotion and when repeated becomes impressed in your subconscious and must come to pass. This is the law of your mind. How you can have money circulating freely in your life. All of us must realize that we are immersed and surrounded by an infinite presence which possesses the answers to all the difficulties and problems of the world. A presence which is referred to as omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence and omniaction, and which responds to the thoughts of man. When we use the term omnipotence, we are referring to all the power and energy in the entire universe, and this power or energy is within you. All of God is present at any point in the universe, and it makes no difference how many individuals the energy is flowing through. There is always an inexhaustible supply, as we are dealing with the infinite source of all energy. Your conscious mind is the pen, and you are writing the idea of wealth in your subconscious. The latter will respond in ways you do not know. You must be sure that you do not subsequently deny what you affirm by saying something like, I can't make ends meet, I can't pay the rent, or I can't afford a new car. Never use the word can't under any circumstances as your subconscious mind takes you literally and blocks the flow of your good. Repeat this phrase as often as you like. Inasmuch as you know what you're doing and why you're doing it, results will follow. You are applying a law of mind, and whatever you impress on the subconscious will be expressed. Money flowed. When he got his conscious and subconscious to agree, a businessman said that he had been praying for prosperity, greater income, and better sales. In other words, he wanted more money to accomplish what he wanted to do, but he got no results. Actually, he became poorer. Oftentimes, the explanation is the cure, however, as it was in this case. He was using affirmations such as, I am wealthy, I am prosperous, money flows freely to me, I am successful. I explained to him that his subconscious accepts the dominant of two ideas or the dominant mood or feeling. In talking further to him, I learned that when he said, I am prosperous, etc., his feeling of lack was dominant so that each affirmation he made called forth the mood of the opposite such as lack, limitation, poor sales, etc., and more lack came into his experience. He realized that the answer was to get his conscious and subconscious to agree. Then there would be no contradiction. The subconscious accepts what we really consciously believe, our convictions and dominant feelings. He engaged the cooperation of his subconscious mind by affirming, every day my sales are improving, more customers come in every day, and they are satisfied and blessed. I am making more and more money every day of my life. I am continuously advancing, growing and moving forward financially. 
These statements created no conflict in his mind, as there was nothing within him which said his sales and money could not increase. He found this approach to be acceptable and sound psychologically, and it produced the desired results. He remained faithful to his mental and spiritual practice, and within four months found it necessary to hire two extra assistants to handle the excess business. He found money flowing to him in avalanches of abundance. Open your mind and heart to the influx of God's riches. To walk the royal road to riches of all kinds, spiritual, mental, material and financial, you must never place obstacles and impediments in the pathway of others, neither must you be jealous, envious or resentful of others. Remember, your thoughts are creative, and whatever you think about another, you are creating in your own life and experience. I have discovered that many talented men and women are jealous and envious of former college friends or their associates in business who have gone up the ladder of success and who have amassed wealth and excelled them. Thinking negatively of former classmates or associates and condemning their wealth causes the wealth and prosperity these people are praying for to vanish and fly away. They are praying two ways. I have found that they are saying in one breath, God is prospering me now. And in the next breath, silently or audibly, they are saying, I resent that fellow's wealth, promotion or increment, as the case may be. I have found that when they change their attitude and sincerely rejoice in the success, promotion, wealth and riches of others, they prosper beyond their fondest dreams. This is based on an age-old truth taught by the ancients thousands of years ago. The ship that comes home to my brother comes home to me. From rags to riches. At 13, Peter Trainer earned $4 a day as a farm laborer near Boston, while his poor immigrant parents struggled to make a new life in the U.S. Today, at 34, he's a multimillionaire. Now I'm earning more, like $4 a minute, says Trainer, who heads Leverage Funding Systems, a Los Angeles corporation that invests money exclusively for over 1,500 physicians. I learned to think success from my father, explains Trainer. He sold neckties and second-hand clothing for a living before World War II. I remember he'd load the clothes into our old clunker of a car and wouldn't come home till he'd sold them all, even if it took until midnight. As a Polish immigrant, my dad had very old-world attitudes toward money and hard work. With success as his constant goal, Trainer has managed to put the Midas touch on almost every job he's held. Everything I do is geared toward success, he said. In high school, I mowed lawns each day after classes. That soon led me into a part-time landscaping business, which was earning me $18,000 a year by the time I was a junior. After putting himself through Boston University, Trainer headed west in 1961. I came to California for success, he explained to the inquirer. I observed successful men and emulated their styles, their techniques and their disciplines. First, he took a job with the Penn Mutual Insurance Company and broke a company record by selling $3 million worth of insurance in his first year. In his third year, Trainer wrote $12 million worth of insurance, establishing himself as the industry's number one super salesman. Though riding the peak of success, Trainer soon left Penn Mutual in his search for still higher peaks. He decided to form his own investment company. I got the idea after learning that doctors are the best prospects for buying insurance, said Trainer, who says he's worth about $6 million today. I knew doctors had money, but also knew they often didn't have time to wisely invest it themselves. So, I started leverage funding to make their money go to work for them, and for me too. Trainer admits to owning what is, 
very definitely the controlling interest in the corporation which he said made profits of over two million dollars last year and he also has controlling interest in Lester Trainer Productions a firm that is venturing into filmmaking success is just a matter of applying yourself in the right way if you analyze things carefully and move logically there are really very few ideas that are impractical said Trainer, who lives in a large home in the fashionable Trousdale Estates near Hollywood. But you pay a price for success. For me, the highest price is the time I spend away from my wife Marnie and our four children. The above article appeared in the September 2, 1973 issue of The National Enquirer by Lloyd Watson. All Peter Trainer had was a good idea, and as he nourished and sustained it, his subconscious compelled him to attract riches in a magnificent way. You can also think success, think wealth, think riches. Your subconscious will magnify and multiply your good a thousandfold in ways you cannot now imagine. If you want a lot of money, think of what you would do. Talk and act as if you had all the money you need to do what you want to do. A man amassed a great fortune by conducting an inner conversation with himself on the wise use of money. His inner speech conformed to his aim in life, and when the two agreed, his prayer was answered. He was constantly thinking how he could distribute the money wisely, judiciously, and constructively. He pictured in his mind all the things he wanted to do and all of them came to pass. Your inner speech or conversation, your thought and feeling, is always made manifest. And the word, the thought image, was made flesh. As in, made manifest, John 1.14. You are here to lead a full and happy life. You should have all the money you need to do what you want to do and when you want to do it. Realize that money is God's way of maintaining the economic health of the nation. Money, in whatever form it takes, is good and very good. Look upon money as a symbol of freedom, beauty, abundance, refinement, luxury and the good life. Be friendly with money and you will always have all you want. A banker discovered that his inner speech was the cause of all the outer experiences of his life. He began to think, speak, and act as if he already had the money he was seeking. In other words, he was thinking from the desired end in the same way as if he actually physically possessed all the things he was seeking. His inner conversation was, I have a beautiful home now. He discovered his inner speech, his quiet inner talking to himself, brought forth all his desires and money circulates in his life, freely and copiously. There is a simple formula that enables you to have a steady flow of money in your life to meet all your requirements. Take a little phrase, easily graven in your subconscious, and repeat it over and over again. It will sink into your subconscious, and since the law of your subconscious is compulsive, you will be compelled to express wealth. Use this phrase, money is circulating freely in my life and there is always a divine surplus. Do not at the same time or subsequently deny what you affirm. A man who believed in lack and limitation was affirming, I am wealthy, I am prosperous, and was gradually getting poorer. He learned that his conscious and subconscious had to agree in prayer. Accordingly, he began to affirm, Every day my sales are improving. More customers come to my store. I am making more and more money every day of my life. I am continually advancing, growing and moving forward financially. These statements created no conflict in his mind, and they produced the desired result. Within four months, he had to hire two extra assistants to handle all his customers. A great stumbling block to many people in attaining wealth is that they are jealous and envious of the riches of others, 
not realizing that whatever you think about the other, you are creating in your own mind, body and conditions. Your thought is creative, and to be jealous and envious of others is to actually impoverish yourself and attract more lack and limitation. The thing to do is to rejoice in the success of all those around you and to wish for them health, wealth and all the riches of the infinite. As you do this sincerely and honestly, you will discover that the ship of riches that came home to your brother will also come home to you. Love, goodwill, is the fulfilling of the law. Peter Trainer, who was a $4 a day laborer, had the idea of success and riches uppermost in his mind and went from rags to riches on a magnificent scale. He's worth over $6 million today. He started the leverage funding company and invested money wisely for 1,500 doctors. In making money for them, he made it also for himself. You too can have an idea worth a fabulous fortune. How the Cosmic Energizer can bring you the good things of life. Abraham Lincoln said, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for the day. Socrates said, our prayers should be for blessings in general, for God knows best what is good for us. Tennyson said, more things are wrought by prayer than the world dreams of. What are men better than sheep or goats that nourish a blind life within the brain? If knowing God, they lift no hands of prayer both for themselves and those who call them friends. Coleridge said, He prayeth best who loveth best. Whittier said, The simple heart that freely asks in love, obtains. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, Is not a prayer a study of truth? A sally of the soul into the unfound infinite. No man prayed heartily without learning something. Bunyan said, It is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. There is an old proverb that says, What men usually ask for when they pray to God is that two and two may not make four. When you pray, do not try to change the cosmic energizer which is God, for God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Effective prayer is aligning yourself with that which is true of God, and which becomes a focal point for the expression of life, love, truth, beauty, joy, and abundance in your life. In other words, prayer is the contemplation of the truths of God from the highest standpoint, the cosmic energizer does not suspend its laws for anybody, neither does it play any favorites. It is impersonal and no respecter of persons. Prayer is the response of the cosmic energizer to your habitual thinking and imaging, as well as to your belief. In a certain sense, there are as many forms of prayer as there are people in the world. He prayed the prayer of petition. Recently, I talked to a sailor whose ship had been torpedoed in the last World War. He was adrift for 10 or 12 hours on a makeshift raft. He said that he cried aloud, Oh God, save me, you know I'm here. To him, God was an anthropomorphic being existing up in space somewhere. He did not know the laws of mind, that God was the spirit within him, omnipresent, without face, form or figure, and instantly available to all men. His begging and beseeching did not reach the cosmic energizer, but his blind belief did. When he was rescued by a Norwegian ship, the captain said that for some reason or another he changed his course, and the sailor adrift was espied by a sailor on watch on the ship. The reason for the man's rescue was that he went all the way out on the limb, trusting implicitly that he would be saved. The cosmic energizer responded according to his blind belief. Your thought is your prayer. 
To pray means to think from the standpoint of universal principles and eternal verities in the same manner as an engineer thinks from established principles of mathematics or a chemist from the standpoint of the laws underlying chemical combinations. Every thought, in a certain sense, is a prayer for the simple reason that every thought tends toward action and manifestation. The Bible says, the word was God, John 1.1. A word is a thought expressed, and you are told it was God, meaning it is creative, for there is only one creative power, that is, the cosmic energizer. Your thought being creative is therefore God also. All of us have a common source, and we are made of one universal substance. The Bible says, After this manner therefore pray ye, our Father, Matthew 6-9, which means all of us come forth from the one life principle, or cosmic energizer. Therefore, in truth, we are all related. It is essential, therefore, when you pray to have love and goodwill for all men and women everywhere, as well as for the beasts of the field and everything else in the world. Man must sense his essential unity with all things, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and indeed all growing things. The cosmic energizer creates all things and everything is made inside and out of it. No one thing in the universe can be in opposition to another, for the cosmic energizer can't be at war with itself. We are all parts of one stupendous whole, whose body nature is, and God is the soul. How to pray in the right way There are many levels and modes of prayer. The old maxim says, when your thoughts are God's thoughts, constructive, based on principle, God's power is with your thoughts of good. Prayer is essentially thinking from a constructive standpoint. The right way to pray consists of the spiritual premise that there is a cosmic energizer within each of us that becomes the thing we desire, to the point that we accept this as true. Your constructive thought action is in tune with the cosmic energizer, and it responds according to the nature of your thought. True prayer is a sustained constructive attitude of mind that results in conviction once your desire is deposited in your subconscious mind. The answer is made manifest as part of a creative law. The acid test of whether or not you have reached a conviction is when your mind accepts the idea completely and you can't conceive of the opposite. Why her prayers were not answered The tendency of the life principle, or cosmic energizer, is to heal, restore, prosper, and bless humanity in countless ways. Otherwise, there would be no design, no chemical affinity, no uniting forces in this universe. There is a built-in principle of wholeness and unity in every organism. In the book of James it says, Ye ask, and receive not because ye ask amiss. James 4.3 Mrs. B had ulcers and was taking medicine prescribed by her doctors, but was nevertheless constantly saying, the medicine is no good, my ulcers are worse. All her thoughts were of a bitter, ulcerated nature. She was resentful and full of hostility and suppressed rage toward relatives. She was at the same time petitioning a god afar off, up in the sky somewhere, to heal her condition, which she ignorantly inflicted on herself. She was praying with a mind and heart full of hostility, suppressed rage and resentment, which is praying amiss. Her reversed attitude transformed her life. Following a simple explanation as to what she was doing to herself, she decided to release her relatives as follows. I completely surrender my in-laws to the great ocean of life, wishing for them harmony, health and peace. Whenever any one of them comes to my mind, I will immediately affirm, I released you, God be with you. 
She also decided to stop criticizing her doctors and the medicine, realizing that when she no longer needed a crutch, she would be healed, and in the meantime, she should stop finding fault with herself and others. She also realized that her angry, negative thoughts had produced her ulcers, and it stood to reason that harmonious, peaceful, loving thoughts would restore her to wholeness. The Prayer That Freed Her She made a habit of affirming the following truths of life. I am at peace with all men and all things. I am divinely guided in my eating and drinking. I am filled with the peace, harmony, strength, vitality and energy from the cosmic energizer. The life forces flow freely, joyously and harmoniously through my whole being and I am whole and perfect. As she continued saturating her mind with these truths, and since she had forgiven herself for entertaining negative thoughts and had released her relatives, a wonderful sense of peace came over her. She has now found a new life and is kinder, nobler and more efficient in every way. How he dissolved an acute problem. A few months ago, a doctor friend of mine became involved in a serious lawsuit. He was very much annoyed, perplexed, and deeply resentful because of the lies and false accusations hurled at him by his opponents. The lawsuit was not progressing satisfactorily for him. I explained to him that he would have to eradicate his hostility and resentment first before he could pray successfully. He began to affirm regularly and systematically Infinite justice, love, harmony, and truth of the cosmic energizer operate in the minds and hearts of all involved in this lawsuit, and the truth is my shield and buckler. Whenever the thought of his opponents came to his mind, he affirmed, God's love fills your soul. After about a week or so, he had a deep feeling of peace, and when the case reached the appeals court, it was dismissed. Love is the great magnet. This doctor said to me that since he had reversed his attitude, he had discovered that love is like a magnet of iron, which draws to itself its own. Likewise, he was attracting more and more patients and had remarkable healings. His wife says, my husband is now magnetic. Magnetism is simply an emanation from the cosmic energizer. It is the love, the power, and the vitality that he is radiating to all those around him. He has transformed himself and is constantly giving out a current of love, and all who come within his orbit are blessed. Before his transformation, he was angry, hateful and resentful, and had no magnetism. He was losing patience and money. He had actually shut off the currents from the cosmic energizer, he has discovered, however, that divine love dissolves everything unlike itself. A mental blueprint transformed her life. A few months ago, I gave a lecture to a small group at a private home in Maui, one of the lovely islands of Hawaii. One of the guests there told all of us how she had transformed her life. She pointed out that she had read many books on prayer therapy, positive thinking and mind training, yet her life was a mess. It was lonely, frustrating, and financially embarrassing, and she had only a part-time position. Eight words in the Bible, however, changed her life. Faith, if it hath not works, is dead. James 2.17 She dabbled with painting as a hobby, and one day she painted the kind of house she wanted, a sort of mental blueprint. She pasted it in a section of a large sheet of paper, on still another section she wrote down, $25,000 a year salary. On another section she pasted, I am happily married to a wonderful man. Then she painted a picture of a swimming pool with a wire fence around it. She pinned this large sheet of paper up in her apartment, where she could look at it frequently. She knew that these pictures would gradually form a mental mold through which the cosmic energizer would flow, energizing and vitalizing all her desires. 
Gradually, she impressed her subconscious mind. Desire coupled with belief were the finishing touches to her mental exercise. She said that after a few weeks, she could actually feel herself possessing all these things. Mental possession is nine points of the law, and the manifestation follows. How the answer came. Shortly thereafter, during a visit to Honolulu for dental appointments, she met an old friend at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. He introduced her to his brother, who fell in love with her at first sight, and married her. He now gives her an allowance of $25,000 a year to spend as she likes. She has a wonderful home in Sydney, Australia, a swimming pool, and a marvelous husband. All of us were impressed by her simplicity, her faith and confidence in the laws of mind, and the wonders of the infinite power within all of us. Her favorite quotation is, I desire to win, and I accept the power within. Points to remember. 1. Coleridge said, He prayeth best, who loveth best. 2. When you pray, you do not try to change the cosmic energizer, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Prayer is aligning yourself with the eternal verities of life and becoming a focal point for the expression of life, love, truth, beauty, and the life more abundant. 3. The prayer of petition works occasionally, for example, when a man goes all the way out on a limb and trusts what to him is a god in the skies. The real truth of the matter is that he answers his own prayer. The cosmic energizer responds to his blind belief. 4. In a certain sense, your thought is your prayer for the simple reason that every thought tends to action and manifestation. There is only one creative power, namely the cosmic energizer, which permeates all life. Your thought is the only immaterial power you know. You are what you think all day long. 5. When you pray, it is essential that you be at peace with all men and all things. Realize your essential unity with all life, for God is life or spirit and one part of spirit can't be antagonistic to another part of spirit, as spirit or God is one and indivisible. When you're at peace with the whole world, the cosmic energizer flows through you, filling up all the empty vessels in your life. 6. When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. Prayer is essentially thinking from a constructive standpoint. True prayer consists of the spiritual premise that the cosmic energizer becomes the thing you desire to the point you accept this as true. 7. The tendency of the cosmic energizer is to heal, restore, and prosper you. 8. A woman had ulcers due to bitter thoughts of hostility, resentment, and rage. She learned that in order to get a healing, she had to cease all criticism and condemnation of others and to forgive herself for harboring negative thoughts. She began to bless all those who irritated her. She made a habit of praying as follows. I am filled with the peace, harmony, strength and vitality of the cosmic energizer and I am made whole and perfect. She found her health and peace in this changing world. 9. A doctor was involved in a bitter lawsuit. When he decided to eradicate his resentment and hostility, he was able to pray effectively. Whenever the thought of his opponents came to his mind, he affirmed, God's love fills your soul. He also began to claim boldly that the infinite justice, harmony and truth of God prevailed, and the case was finally dismissed. 10. This doctor discovered that love was a great magnet, and he found that he attracted more patients and had remarkable healings. Love dissolves everything unlike itself. 11. A woman painted the kind of home she wanted with a swimming pool and pasted it on a section of a large sheet of paper 
adding some written requests such as, I'm married to a wonderful man. I have an income of $25,000 a year. She placed the sheet of paper in a prominent place in her apartment and gazed at it many times a day, knowing she was impregnating her subconscious mind. The cosmic energizer flowed through her mental mold, fulfilling all her requests in divine order. Her favorite maxim is, I desire to win and I accept the power within. How the Cosmic Energizer can reveal answers and transform your life. A few years ago, while traveling by train from Dublin to Cork, I noticed a man carrying a bag on his back, and the conductor said to him, You can take that bag off your back. The train can carry both of you. And this reminded me of the fact that there are a great many people carrying the burden of grief, sorrow, grudges, peeves, bitterness and hostility, which robs them of vital energy, creating short circuits in their lives. Like the leakage of electricity, the cosmic energy in their lives is dissipated and wasted. Recently, I interviewed a woman who had followed a scientific diet prescribed by her physician and who had taken off 40 pounds for a time, but in the past few months, she was, as she said, back where she started, 40 pounds overweight. I explained to her that the basic reason for her overweight was the burden she was carrying in her mind, and when she followed the great truth, cast thy burden upon the Lord, or law, and he shall sustain thee, Psalm 55. Her burden consisted of a deep hatred for her husband, together with a suppressed rage. She had discovered that he had been unfaithful and had pretended to forgive him. However, by hating him, she was also hating herself because she was thinking hateful thoughts and generating negative emotions. All hatred is self-hatred, which is a deadly poison. Her self-loathing had caused her to put on aprons of flesh so that she would be repulsive to men. The explanation oftentimes is the cure. I explained to her that the cosmic energizer flows harmoniously, peacefully, joyously and rhythmically, but that this flow of vital energy had been dammed up by her, bringing on her fatigue, exhaustion, insomnia and migraine. I suggested she throw out of her mind everything that was not contributing to her beauty, charm, vitality, and peace of mind. She realized what she was doing to herself, actually generating mental poisons which robbed her of peace, health, and happiness. She came to a clear-cut decision and forthwith discontinued living a lie. She directed her attorney to get a divorce for her. She also decided to face her husband and his paramour, and tell them that she wished for them all the blessings of life. How her freedom came. She decided to become a focal point for the cosmic energizer and claimed boldly that the vitalizing, energizing power of the infinite was flowing through her and that divine love was saturating her whole being. Knowing that as she aligned herself with the cosmic energy, which is love, love would dissolve everything unlike itself. She discovered after a while that all ill will, bitterness and hatred had melted away. Every night prior to sleep, she affirmed, I weigh 120 pounds in divine order through divine love. After a few weeks, she lost all desire for fatty foods which had contributed to her overweight. She regained her beauty, grace and charm and she also discovered that love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13.10 The cosmic energizer seeks to express itself as the life more abundant. Cosmic energy moves constructively, harmoniously, rhythmically and joyously. When we go against the principle of harmony and love or think and act in any way contrary to the forward tendency of life, we suffer but we have inflicted the punishment upon ourselves. You can definitely cause the cosmic energy to flow 
when you have a certain plan, aim, or goal in life. You go where your vision is. Your vision is what you are looking at in your mind, what you are giving attention to, the ideal you are focused on. When you realize you can reach your goal, the cosmic energizer flows on your behalf, attracting to you everything you need for the fulfillment of your dream. How he envisioned his plan. One of the listeners to my radio program in Los Angeles, which is heard throughout most of Southern California, wrote and said, I learned from listening to your program that I had been blocking my own good because I was constantly blaming the boss, the organization, my wife or somebody else for my unhappy experiences and lack of funds. I decided to lighten the load after I heard you explain the meaning of casting the burden. I now know that my anger was burning up my precious energy at a very rapid rate, and it had affected my glands and my blood pressure, and was bringing on complete exhaustion and depletion of my vital energy. The above is a digest of a long letter, but it shows how criticism, condemnation of others and suppressed rage debilitate the entire organism and goes contrary to the normal flow of the cosmic energizer. He learned that it makes no difference how others act or what they do. The thing that matters is how he reacts. Actually, it was the movement of his own thoughts which had caused all his trouble and impeded his progress. It is not what others do, it is our thoughts about it that matters. How he cast the burden, opening the way for the cosmic energizer to flow. He saturated his mind with the following truths, knowing that by repetition, faith and expectancy, they would sink into his subconscious mind and come forth into his experience and operate in all phases of his life. I know that all men are my brothers. All of us have a common father. I see the living God in everyone I meet. I salute the divinity in each person. The love of God flows through me to all mankind. I bless all those who criticize me. I pray for those who speak ill of me. I rejoice to see others succeed. I loose everyone now and I let them go in peace. I open the windows of my mind. I let in the influx of the Holy Spirit. I am perfect and cleansed. I am at peace. The love of God fills my mind. All is well. I reflect the love of God. I am absolutely loving toward all. I am conscious of God everywhere because God is over all, through all. I know that the action of God is taking place in the mind and hearts of all. It is wonderful. In a month's time, his whole life had been transformed. He no longer burned up the vital energy. He had found peace within, and having found love within, he had found it waiting for him everywhere. He has now also opened the channels for wealth and health. How she ceased wasting vital energy. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Solomon 2.15 A government secretary came to have a consultation with me, saying that her problems in the office were due to the little foxes that spoil the vine. She was highly sensitive and said that other girls who were her fellow employees were jealous and envious of her, and that they carried tales and lies about her to the supervisor. She was resenting the girls, and placing herself in a house of bondage and thraldom, all self-imposed. She was giving power to others to hurt her and was burning up vital energy, resulting in nervousness, the all-gone feeling, and complete exhaustion at night, accompanied by insomnia. At my suggestion, she ceased giving attention to the petty annoyance, negativities and gossip of the office. These trivial irritations were consuming so much of her inner energy, they caused her to make mistakes, which in turn kept her mind off that which is lovely and of good report.
It was also preventing the flow of all good from the cosmic energizer, the source of all blessings. How she got back on the beam. Every morning as well as other times during the day, she identified herself with the cosmic energizer and affirmed boldly, God is my boss, my employer, my guide, my counselor, my source of supply, I give all my allegiance, loyalty and devotion to the supreme power within me. God guides me, watches over me, sustains and strengthens me, and I am energized from on high. God thinks, speaks and acts through all the girls in the office. And whenever I think of any one of them, I affirm immediately, God loves you and cares for you. She adhered faithfully to these truths and found that as she changed inside, the outward picture changed also. She has found peace in this changing world. She ceased carrying the dead useless burdens of resentment, anger and hostility. These are the little foxes that spoil the vine of life, which is the exhilarating and vitalizing flow of cosmic energy coursing through our entire system she has gone up the ladder of life and is now a supervisor. Her journey is onward, upward and Godward. Looking upon life as a current of energy. Paul says, Faith which worketh by love. Galatians 5, 6 The love of which Paul speaks is the feeling in your heart of goodwill to all. It is an emanation or outreaching of the heart to all when you rejoice in seeing people as they ought to be, happy, joyous and free. Love frees, gives. It is the Spirit of God in action. Love is also that inner feeling whereby you give all allegiance, loyalty and recognition to the one power, the cosmic energizer, and you pay no attention to any person, circumstance or condition or anything else that would tend to swerve you from your good. She looked upon life as a current. A Mrs. B, whose husband had passed on a few years ago, felt lonesome, bitter and hostile. She felt somewhat isolated from her family, who lived in the East and who never wrote her or communicated with her in any way. At my suggestion, she started to cast aside the burdens of self-doubt, loneliness, criticism of relatives and dislike of others in the retirement center. She began to discard everything that was not contributing handsomely to her welfare. She began to affirm frequently to herself the following. The cosmic energizer is flowing through me as a current of life, love, truth and beauty creating pleasant relations, harmony, abundance and security in my life. I am a focal point for the cosmic energizer, and my mind and heart are open for all the blessings of life. I give thanks for a wonderful trip to Europe and for God's riches flowing to me from all angles. I live by the law of love and I wish for everyone what I wish for myself. She reiterated these truths many times a day, which formed a nucleus around which the cosmic energy began to flow. A few short weeks went by, and then, out of the blue, her daughter, who lived in the East, phoned her, asking her to join her on a trip to Europe, which extended for six weeks, all expenses paid. On this trip, she met a retired professor, they got married in London and have now settled down in Spain to live out their years in happy retirement. She wrote me recently saying she has never been so happy. She tends the garden, gives English lessons twice a week to sons and daughters of neighbors, and is having the time of her life. She commented that she no longer holds the memory of grudges, peeves and ill will. She also realized that her previous sense of guilt had reduced her to a kind of slavery and that she now realizes she'd been constantly trying to compensate for her low opinion of herself. Learn to accept forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Have a high estimate of yourself. You are a son or daughter of the infinite. 
Have a healthy, reverent, wholesome respect for the divinity that created you, watches over you, and that created the whole universe and all things therein contained. Make a habit of exalting the divine presence within you. One of the quickest ways in the world to eradicate an inferiority or rejection complex is to look in the mirror for about five minutes every morning and evening and affirm out loud, feelingly and knowingly, I exalt God in the midst of me, mighty to heal, restore, beautify and magnify my good in countless ways. You will be amazed how you will activate the cosmic energizer, which will flow as currents of love, peace, harmony and abundance into your experience. He erred in trying to compensate for guilt feelings. A junior executive in a large organization was continually mentally belittling his associates. He made a sort of fetish of finding fault with all those around him in the office. He was full of criticism about their abilities, talents, morals and ethical standards. I pointed out to him that actually what he was trying to do was to drag them down to his own level, while in the meantime trying to exalt himself, that in reality he was projecting his own shortcomings and sense of inferiority onto them. He did not like what he saw, and this attitude resulted in his hostility and pugnacity. This young man was really wasting his vital energy in this running battle in his mind, causing him to lose his grip on the flow of the life more abundant. How he transformed himself This man had a submerged sense of guilt going back to an early marriage. During the pregnancy of his wife, he had deserted her, divorced her in Mexico, and remarried. Apparently, they quarreled and were hopelessly incompatible. And because of his sense of guilt, he was always on the defensive, sensitive, and highly irritable. The explanation is the cure. I asked him, Would you desert your wife now? He answered, No. I'm very happy and have two wonderful children. I pointed out to him that he was not the same man who deserted his other wife 20 years previously, emotionally, physically, mentally or spiritually, for the simple reason that he was leading a good life now and sincerely wanted to continue to lead a full and happy life. The life principle does not punish we punish ourselves by misuse of law and by negative thinking. But the minute a man decides to change his thoughts according to the eternal verities, there is an automatic response from the subconscious mind, and the past is forgotten and remembered no more. A new beginning is a new end. Begin to fill your mind with faith, confidence, love and goodwill and the result will be health, happiness, peace, and security. With the aid of his attorney, this man made a sincere effort to locate his former wife, who had remarried. He found she had a daughter who was his own. He sent an anonymous gift of $30,000 to her on the advice of his lawyer. This gave him a marvelous sense of relief. He began to exalt God in the midst of himself, and also practiced radiating love, peace and goodwill to all his associates and his former wife, wishing for each one health, happiness, promotion and all the blessings of life. That short circuit of guilt and inferiority had been unearthed and poise, peace and harmony now reign supreme. Love is the fulfilling of the law, and he knows now that the ship that comes home to my brother comes home to me. His daughter, whom he had not seen in twenty years, recently came to visit him, and there was a joyous reunion. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Points to remember 1. Many people are carrying excess burdens such as grief, resentment, self-condemnation and hostility. These are mental poisons that rob you of vitality, enthusiasm and energy, 
and debilitate the entire organism. Learn to cast off these burdens by opening your mind and heart to the influx of cosmic energy and divine love, which dissolves everything unlike itself. 2. A woman who hated her husband compensated by putting on excess aprons of flesh. She eventually realized that all hatred is self-hatred and that she was actually poisoning herself. She dissolved the lie and set her husband free, wishing for him all the blessings of life. Having forgiven herself, she decreed to her subconscious every night prior to sleep that she was healthy and a perfect weight. Her subconscious freed her from the desire for fatty foods. Her beauty, grace and charm returned. When you have a definite aim, goal or vision in life, you will discover that the cosmic energizer will flow on your behalf, vitalizing your whole being. Creative ideas and inspiration will flow and all doors will be opened to you, bringing about a fulfillment of your dream. 4. Men block their promotion, growth and expansion by criticizing and condemning others. What they fail to see is that when you condemn, criticize, demean and belittle others, you, being the thinker, are actually creating all these qualities within yourself. Also, you're actually trying to drag others down to your own low estimate of yourself. Men tend to project onto others the shortcomings, inadequacies and inferiorities within themselves. It is not what others say or do. It is our thought about it that matters. The solution is to exalt God in the midst of yourself and to salute the divinity in others, wishing for them prosperity, promotion and all the blessings of life. Do this regularly and systematically until it becomes a habit, and you will find the peace that passeth understanding. A secretary was placing herself in a mental house of bondage by giving power to other girls to hurt her and was burning up her own vital energy, resulting in nervousness and insomnia. She identified herself with the divine presence within her and looked upon this supreme power as her guide, counselor, paymaster, adjuster, and source of all blessings. At the same time, she silently saluted the divinity and all the other girls, affirming, God loves you and cares for you. She found peace in this changing world. She changed inside, and the outside world changed in the image and likeness of her contemplation. 6. Paul says, Faith which worketh by love. Galatians 5, 6. This love is not a Hollywood confection or a sentiment. It means an outreaching of the heart, an emanation of goodwill to all. It is that inner feeling of faith and confidence which enables you to fulfill your dreams regardless of the criticism or ridicule of the world. It also means that regardless of the vilification, hostility or jealousy of others, you tenaciously keep on until the day breaks and the shadows flee away. It is essential that you maintain cordiality, amiability and goodwill to all people everywhere, for although, as Paul says, you have the faith that moves mountains and you lack love, you are as nothing. Faith works by love. 7. A woman living in a retirement home, bitter, hostile and disillusioned with her children who never communicated with her, decided to become a focal point for the cosmic energizer and claimed that it was flowing through her as currents of life, love, truth, abundance and security. She made a habit of giving thanks for God's riches flowing freely to her and began to live by the law of love wishing for everyone all the blessings of life. Wonders began to happen in her life. Her daughter phoned her out of the blue and invited her to travel to Europe for six weeks. While there, she met the man of her dreams and married him, and they are now living the life more abundant in Spain. 
she learned to cast the burden on the God Self within and become free. 8. Learn to forgive yourself first for harboring negative thoughts about yourself or anybody else. You can't give what you don't have. When you let the sunshine of God's love into your soul, you can release to others the imprisoned splendor within you. Begin now to let the influx of divine love into your soul. Exalt God in the midst of you. When love enters, there is no room for resentment, ill will, jealousy, or enmity. All are dissolved in the light of God's love. 10. A man was trying to exalt himself by tearing others down. This indicated his own inferiority, insecurity, and sense of guilt, which were unresolved. He was wasting his vital energy and had lost his grip on life. He learned that he was punishing himself and resolved his sense of guilt by forwarding $30,000 on the suggestion of his attorney to his former wife and child, whom he had deserted 20 years previously. Self-condemnation is hell and self-forgiveness is heaven. There was a joyous reunion with his own daughter, and he found that love and goodwill wipe away all tears. He respects the divinity within himself now, and what automatically follows from this is the conscious respect for the divinity in all men. He knows now the truth of the ancients, the ship that comes home to my brother comes home to me. How the Cosmic Energizer can bring you all kinds of blessings. Every man is a son of God, and every woman is a daughter of God, for there is but one power, one presence, one cause, and one substance. Learn to tune in with the Cosmic Energizer, and as you do you will find yourself coming of age spiritually in your new capacity, functioning in terms of your real self. Begin to claim that you are energized from on high and that you are doing all things through the God power within you and you will find yourself ignited by the cosmic energizer and you will emit sparks, electrical energy and force that can actually be sensed and appreciated. Contacting the God self is like contacting high tension wires. Results do ensue. All life is largely an absorption of a power that you as yet do not know to be actually there. Before you, the dynamo, begin rotating there is only potential power as a possibility. But when you begin to move as a dynamic, magnetic personality, dynamo, you will soon emit sparks and generate power from the source of all power. However, you must become a self-starter, some people only come to life in emergencies instead of making it a daily habit of abiding continually in the field of potential energy. How she discovered the cosmic energy. A frail woman weighing about 90 pounds told me that she'd lifted a truck under which her husband was pinned and released him. Four men tried to lift the same truck some hours later and could not do so. Her power and energy were always there, and when she assumed it was there, the cosmic energy responded. Assumptions become concrete realities. Churchill said our assumptions harden into facts. When chatting with a returned veteran from Vietnam, he said that when he was lost in the jungle at first, he was fearful. Then he sat down and said to himself, I'm all right. God is here too. He recalled that one time at home he had been lost in the mountains and had asked a man who was fishing in a stream the way back to the main highway. The man told him the way. He had assumed that the directions were correct and shortly found himself on the main highway. Likewise, he assumed God would guide him back to his battalion or to friendly hands. He began to walk and in some hours he walked directly to the medics who took care of him. Assumptions harden into facts and become objectified on the screen of space. There are tremendous possibilities within you. God, the living Spirit Almighty, 
dwells in you and walks and talks in you. Lord Chesterfield said, Some men live and die with all their greatness still within them. You are a powerhouse dynamo, and you can release the hidden powers through the assumption of right ideas, feelings, and attitudes of mind. God's potential must be increased through your dynamic action, or it will move on and away from you. Believe in God that is in you as a potential, ready to be released like Aladdin's genie. Let this energy go through the blood vessels of your body by claiming boldly, I am filled with the energy and wisdom of the Infinite One. It is coursing through my veins now. As you continue to do this, you will move dynamically toward health, wealth and vitality. How she experiences the blessings of life. A businesswoman with whom I had a long-distance conversation complained that her business, marital and home conditions were very bad and practically beyond her control. I pointed out to her that on the contrary, she had control and dominion over her thoughts, feelings, actions and reactions, and that she must definitely assume responsibility for harmony, peace and happiness in her life. On the phone, I suggested that she open the Bible and read Ezekiel 34, 26. There shall be showers of blessing. I suggested that she enthrone that idea in her mind, and the idea being dynamic, she should listen to it with an inner ear. It would then penetrate her subconscious and release its energy. This woman's life was dried up like the soil that has been too long without rain. She was full of fear, resentment and hatred toward her husband and filled with a sense of defeatism. She said her first year in business had been a great success, beautiful and harmonious. She took credit for the first year's success. I pointed out, however, that she must also assume responsibility for her failures and discordant home life. A few weeks passed by and I had a wonderful letter from her saying that she had begun to sing to herself, There shall be showers of blessings for me. She got lost in the idea and it found its way into her subconscious. From then on everything changed, business picked up, there were new customers and a promotion for her husband. She is now possessed with a new zest for living, as she began to sing the song of triumph to herself, she dissolved all the bitterness and hostility, and the cosmic energizer began to flow through her as harmony, health, peace and abundance. Fear blocked his flow of energy. Recently I talked with a businessman who was afraid of the future, of devaluation of the dollar, of some dire malady and bankruptcy. I explained to him that he was blocking the flow of his potential energy and consequently becoming less effective in his work. There is no occasion for fear, for there is an antidote within him to cast out fear. The antidote is God within man. This power is supreme, omnipotent, omnipresent, and there is nothing to oppose the one power, nothing to thwart it or vitiate it. I gave him a Bible verse containing these dynamic words, Be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Joshua 1, 9. He began to affirm frequently, God, the Almighty One, is guiding me and directing me in all ways. His love surrounds me, enfolds me and encompasses me. This power flows through me as harmony, strength, right action, and divine love. Whenever a fear thought came to his mind, he supplanted it immediately by affirming, God loves me and cares for me. He made a habit of this and found that by disciplining himself, the obsession of fear was dissipated and dissolved in the light of God's love. He realized that by persistent repetition of eternal verities, he caused the power of the infinite to be active and potent in his life. 
His fear has changed to faith in God and all things good. His newfound faith in the infinite presence and power has created a channel in his mind, and from this groove, all his other thoughts take their quality and color. Now all his thoughts are tinged with faith, confidence, love, and goodwill. The biblical verse I gave him saturated his mind and heart and healed him of all his fears. How he received more power and energy. Recently, I conducted a class on the psychological and spiritual meaning of the book of John in the New Testament. I explained the meaning of the verse. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. John 1.12 I explained that if any man opened his mind and heart to the influx of this cosmic energy and power, he could do great things, and that his motto in life should be, I can do marvelous and wonderful things through the God power which strengthens and guides me. A son of God means any man who realizes that God indwells him and that God is his father. The life principle, the progenitor or father of all, for there is only one creative principle. Therefore I said to believe that God is your silent partner, your guide, your paymaster, your troubleshooter, your advisor, your source of supply, and your instant and everlasting support at all times. You came, as Wordsworth said, trailing clouds of glory, from God which is our home. One man at the end of the class session said to me that every morning he stood before the mirror and said out loud, I am a son of God, victory is mine, triumph is mine, success is mine, wealth is mine, harmony is mine, God is my partner, it is wonderful. The class lasted five weeks. He practiced this technique every morning. On the third week, as a complete surprise, he was asked by the governing board of his corporation to be president of the company with a high salary plus expenses. New ideas came to him continuously and in one instance he saved the company a great deal of money due to an intuitive voice which told him how to solve the problem. This man began to realize the tremendous power and wisdom lying dormant within him and called upon it and he felt the response. He said to me, I know now that nothing in life can defeat me. I know how to tap the power. She said, I'm so religious. What is wrong? Recently a woman said to me, I have great faith in my religion. I believe in the commandments, the golden rule, and in the tenets of my church. Yet I am not successful. I can't make ends meet, and I am frustrated and unhappy in my work. I pray and get no answer. The reason for all this was that her religion was purely formal. She was giving lip service to the doctrines and tenets of her church. While she was conventionally good, she expected reverses, was full of self-condemnation, was resentful of associates in business, and believed that God punishes people. She subscribed intellectually to the doctrines, creed and dogmas of the church. This was her formal belief, all of which was superficial. I explained to her that the only thing that really mattered was the belief she held deep down in her heart, her emotional espousals, her fears and deep-seated convictions. Religion is that mental attitude which binds you. Her dominant idea was condemnation of herself. The idea that binds you is your real religion. Your dominant belief about yourself, life and God is your real religion. Your subconscious assumptions, convictions and beliefs dictate and control all your conscious action. In other words, your religion is your relationship with God. This woman practiced the mirror treatment by standing in front of the mirror every morning about five minutes, affirming out loud and with deep feeling, I am a daughter of the infinite. God loves me and cares for me. I exalt God 
in the midst of me. I am whole, perfect, loving, harmonious. I am inspired from on high. God works wonders through me. Any time the thought of self-condemnation or resentment came to her, she immediately chopped its head off by reminding herself, God loves me and cares for me. Within a month's time, she married a successful scientist, has now a new concept of herself, and has fallen madly in love with the great truths of life. Truly wonders happen as you pray. Points to remember. 1. Every man is a son of God, and every woman is a daughter of God, for there is but one power, presence, cause, and substance. Begin now to claim that you can do all things through the God power that strengthens you. 2. All life is an assumption of power, which as yet you do not know to be actually there. Assume the power exists, and you will soon emit sparks and generate power from on high. 3. A frail and physically weak woman, seeing her husband pinned under a truck, lifted it up and freed him. Previously, four men could not lift the truck. She assumed the power was there, and the cosmic energizer responded. Churchill said that our assumptions harden into facts. A veteran implicitly assumed that there was a guiding principle that would lead him out of the jungle, and he was divinely led every step of the way, and eventually found himself in the arms of his comrades. 5. You are a powerhouse and you can release the hidden powers through the assumption of right ideas, feelings, and attitudes of mind. Claim boldly that you are filled with the energy and wisdom of the infinite, and that this power is now coursing through your veins and arteries. You will feel the influx of energy from on high. 6. A woman who was despondent, gloomy, and in financial straits enthroned an idea, there shall be showers of blessings. The idea captivated her mind, generating tremendous energy and power, which transformed her life financially and socially, resulting in marital harmony and prosperity. 7. Fear was blocking the flow of the cosmic energizer, and one man began to use the great antidote, God, within him. He enthroned in his mind this great truth, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Joshua 1.9 Whenever fear came to his mind, he supplemented the thought with, God loves me and cares for me. He made a habit of this and succeeded in casting out fear. When fear knocks at the door of his mind, faith in God opens the door and there is no one there. 8. A man began to claim, feel, and believe that God was his silent partner, guide, counselor, paymaster, adjuster, and troubleshooter. He gave himself the mirror treatment and affirmed before the mirror every morning, victory is mine, triumph is mine, success is mine, wealth is mine, God is my partner. It is wonderful. He became pre 9. She said she was religious but experienced lack and limitation. True religion, however, is really of the heart or the subconscious. It is what you sincerely believe deep down in your heart that is made manifest in your life. Your nominal belief or theoretical assent to certain creeds, dogmas, rules and regulations is thinking in the head, but it is the thinking in your heart or subconscious that matters. Your dominant belief is your real religion. Believe in the goodness of God in the land of the living. Believe in the guidance of God and the love of God. Believe in the abundance and riches of the infinite, and God will wipe away all tears from your eyes, and there will be no more weeping. How the Cosmic Energizer Can Work Miracles of Healing for You Records of man's mental and physical illnesses as recorded in the Bible 
have reoccurred from time immemorial up to the present moment. You may see the conditions and symptoms of diseases described in the Bible in almost any hospital in the country. It is true, of course, that the diseases described today have scientific names derived from medical terminology. However, all over the world, men and women of various religious beliefs are awakening to the tremendous therapeutic results following the application of mental and spiritual laws. In medicine, psychiatry, psychology, and other related fields, evidence is being adduced and articles written on mental and emotional conflicts as the underlying cause of all kinds of destructive disease. The Cosmic Energizer, the Infinite Healing Presence, is the basis of all healing. All healing takes place according to the belief of the individual. The subconscious mind is the creative faculty within us and manifests whatever the conscious mind impresses upon it. The conscious mind impresses its thought upon it. The thought is the expression of the belief. Hence, whatever is impressed on the subconscious mind, the latter reproduces according to our belief. The wrong belief, which externalizes a sickness, is the belief that some secondary cause, which is only a condition, is a primary cause. She changed her belief and had a miraculous healing. I had a most interesting talk a few days ago with a taxi driver. He told me that his mother was in the habit of saying, I suppose one of these days I will get arthritis and be crippled like my mother and grandmother. He said that as a boy he thought nothing of it until the day came when his mother actually became crippled with arthritis and was hospitalized. Her son took her a copy of The Power of Your Subconscious Mind and said to her, Mother, read this. She did so at the same time, saying to him, I want you to pray for me. The physician in attendance told this young man that his mother would have to use a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Following the reading of the book and the constructive suggestions of her son, however, she realized what had caused her arthritic condition, her subconscious mind. Being impersonal, it had accepted her negative statement which she had repeated over and over again. I suppose I will get arthritis just like my mother and grandmother. Actually, she realized she had brought it on herself, as the subconscious takes you literally. Her new attitude changed everything. She realized that she had to reverse her thinking. Accordingly, at my suggestion, several times a day she reiterated certain truths that her subconscious accepted. I wrote out the following prayer for her. The living spirit within me is the infinite healing presence. I am now planting the idea of wholeness, vitality and perfect health in my subconscious mind. Divine love flows through me, dissolving everything unlike itself. Divine peace fills my soul. The vitality and intelligence of the infinite healing presence permeates and penetrates down to my innermost depths in my subconscious mind. I know that every time I use this prayer, I am strengthening my subconscious mind in its hold on this new belief until I again walk freely and joyously. Her son continued to pray for his mother in a similar way, and though she came home using a wheelchair in a month's time, she became completely healed, and now comes every Sunday to hear me at the Wilshire Ebel Theatre in Los Angeles. How She Released the Cosmic Energizer's Healing Power some months ago, I had the opportunity to observe the wonderful results of a mother who had the faith to believe in the infinite healing presence within her subconscious mind. She brought her five-year-old son to see me. He seemed to be an exceptionally fine, healthy boy, but the mother said that he had been suffering from severe asthmatic attacks and that the medicine he was taking did not always suppress the attacks. The boy's father had passed on shortly after he was born, and the asthmatic condition 
had come on about six months previous to seeing me. I told her that she could again see her boy whole and perfect. St. Augustine said, For what is faith unless it is to believe what you do not see? She set herself the task of demonstrating her faith in the cosmic energizer. This mother had a wonderful knowledge of mental and spiritual laws and said to me, I know that my prayer of faith, though denied by the evidence of my senses, if persevered in, will be deposited in my subconscious mind and come to pass. Three or four times a day she became still and quiet, and in her imagination she pictured her boy in front of her saying, Mom, God healed me, I feel wonderful. She persisted in this mental image, and at the end of a month, the boy was completely free from the paroxysmal attacks of asthma. Her favorite quotation is, For we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5.7 She disciplined her mind and knew that her constructive thought image and the invisible mold created by her in her mind would be subjectified and come to pass. You can practice the absent healing technique. The cosmic energizer is the life principle which animates all people. For example, if your brother is in a foreign country and you wish to pray for him, you must remember that there is no hard and fast line of demarcation between personalities, as subjectively we are all one. When you think of your loved one, there is no time or space in your subconscious mind. Therefore, he picks up your thought of wholeness, beauty, vitality, and love, and these qualities are resurrected within him. The action is that of your conscious mind towards your loved one or friend, and his willingness to receive this is called being in rapport with the other person. The cosmic energizer, or the living spirit, God, is present in its entirety at every point simultaneously. When you give absent treatment or pray for another person who is not present objectively, you can decree wholeness and vitality to the subconscious mind of the sick friend as though it were your own, and according to your belief and conviction, results will follow. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7 Miraculous Healing of a Child Dying with Fever While writing this chapter, I received a long-distance phone call from Georgia, the woman who had called me said that her child was dying, that the medicine given did not reduce the fever, and that there seemed to be no hope. I explained to her that the child, six years old, would respond to her faith and confidence in the infinite healing presence within the child. This mother, at my suggestion, was to withdraw her thought from the contemplation of fever and symptoms and from the corporeal personality altogether, and then to affirm knowingly and feelingly, the cosmic energizer, the living spirit almighty, is the life of my child. God's river of peace saturates her whole being. God's love fills her soul. The vitalizing, healing, harmonizing power of God is made manifest in her mind and body now. The vitality and intelligence of God are resurrected now, and I give thanks. She repeated this prayer for about one half hour over and over again, knowing that the subconscious mind of her child would become thoroughly imbued with the realization of its own healing power, and that health would be restored. At the end of one half hour, the child's temperature became normal, and the medical doctor said to the mother, A higher power did this. The child asked to play with her dog, and also for something to eat. Let the weak say, I am strong. Joel 3.10 Steps in Mental and Spiritual Healing the first step you must take is to refuse to be afraid of the manifest conditions from this very moment. The second step is to come to the realization that the condition is but the product of negative thinking, which will have no power to continue its existence. 
The third step is to exalt the healing power of the cosmic energizer within the person. This will stop the production of all toxins in you or the person you are praying for. Pronounce the condition false. Lift the person up in your mind, seeing the sick person as he ought to be, happy, joyous, and free. Live in the embodiment of your desire, and the word, your thought and feeling, will be made manifest. How a minister released the healing power. Recently, I talked with a minister from New York City who informed me that he gets wonderful results by using one of my books, Miracle of Mind Dynamics. His wife had tuberculosis and was not responding to therapy or to the climate in Tucson, Arizona, where she had spent an entire summer. This minister friend of mine selected a passage from the Bible. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. John 11.41 Three or four times a day, he would calm his mind, relax, and let go. Then he would imagine that he was talking to the invisible healing presence within, and his inner speech was, Thank you, Father, for my wife's miraculous healing. He repeated this over and over again until his mind was saturated with the feeling of thankfulness. His wife continued the same technique. At the end of a month, the sputum and all other tests were completely negative. As they lifted up their minds and hearts to the infinite healing presence, they released the healing power. Their inner speech agreed with their aim. Uspensky had a favorite saying, which was that your inner speech, your inner conversation, your silent thought, must agree with your aim or desire in life. It is your inner speech or conversation that is always made manifest. In this instance, their inner speech agreed with their aims of wholeness, beauty, and perfection. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, the condition, symptom, or problem, will draw all men manifestations unto me. John 12.32 The Master Key to Spiritual Healing the ideal way to practice spiritual mind healing is to completely withdraw all thought from symptoms and from the corporeal condition altogether, and to think of the person for whom you are praying as a purely spiritual being. In other words, identify with the spirit or cosmic energizer within him, and then claim that what is true of the spirit is true of the person you are trying to help. In this technique, you realize that the Spirit, God, is omnipotent and entirely free from subjection to any condition. You affirm that the patient is now expressing the vitality, intelligence, wholeness, and power that constitute the Spirit. The patient is open and receptive to your affirmations of truth, and his subconscious mind becomes charged with the constructive spiritual thoughts of the healer. Wholeness, vitality and strength are resurrected and health is substituted for sickness. How he was snatched from death's door. A woman came to see me a few months ago, saying that her husband was afflicted with delirium tremens, usually called the DTs. His heart was fibrillating and he was also hallucinating. The doctor said his death was only a matter of hours. She asked me to go with her to the hospital as he was asking for me and had been listening to my radio programs every morning. He was under sedation of morphine but was nevertheless coherent and rational. He was a chronic alcoholic and during the bedside conference recited all the crimes he had committed, which were many. He said, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm dying. Will I go to hell? He had old-fashioned religious ideas, even though he had discontinued going to any church. I explained to him that the life principle, God, never condemns, that all judgment is given to the Son, which means our mind, and that we judge ourselves and make our own hell, 
restriction, bondage, and own heaven, peace, harmony, good health, etc. I further explained to him that all he had to do was to forgive himself for all his past transgressions and to resolve not to commit them again. Furthermore, he could join with me now and we would release all those for whom he had a grudge or resentment, as well as all those who had passed over into the next dimension. I told him that perfunctory prayer is not the answer, but instead a real change of heart, where from the depths of himself he had to really wish for all those for whom he had past resentments to have health, happiness, peace, and all the blessings of life. He named about ten persons, some in the next dimension sent there by himself, and we began to pour out God's love, peace, joy, and all the blessings of life upon each one. Suddenly he seemed radiant and happy. The reason for this was that he now had a deep inner faith that there was no power up there which was going to punish him. He felt that he was on the right side of God and that all was forgiven. He relaxed and was ready for what he termed heaven. The psychiatrist and nurse noted a remarkable physical improvement and the new prognosis was that he would live. In a few days he was whole and perfect. The man is now vital, alive and bubbling over with enthusiasm. His forgiveness of himself and others, his relaxed attitude and his surrender to God immediately released his mind and body from the presence of pain, fear, guilt and hatred. His body responded in a miraculous manner to his new mental attitude. His inner sense of freedom and peace of mind released the healing power of the cosmic energizer and he was a new man in God. He realized that self-condemnation is hell and that self-forgiveness is heaven, a mind at peace. How the law of mind forgives and heals The law of your subconscious mind has nothing to do with goodness, badness, creeds, dogmas or religious persuasions. The law is impersonal, for God is no respecter of persons. The sun shines upon the unjust as it does upon the just. The rain falls on the good and the evil. There is no morality in the law of your mind. It is always impartial, impersonal and neutral. Morality depends on your motivation and how you use the law of mind. Your thought carries its own reward. Your idea, desire, plan or purpose is good or bad, depending on the nature of the desire or plan itself. Choose good and good follows. You can bring your desire to pass without hurting a hair of a living being in this world. Paul says that love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans 13.10 This means that when you think right, feel right, act right and do right, you have used the law constructively and you will have good will toward all. This outreaching of your heart toward others will cause them to react in a similar manner toward you. Forgiveness and healing In the Bible is the statement that you are to forgive until 70 times 7. Matthew 18.22 This is a figurative expression which means a thousand times a day if necessary or a constant spirit of forgiveness. Your mind is a principle and when you use the principle in the right way it has no grudge against you. For example, if you use the principles of mathematics, chemistry or electricity in an ignorant or erroneous way the same principles would not hurt you, condemn you, or punish you when you began to use them in the right way. A new beginning is a new end. The life principle never condemns or punishes you. Actually, you punish yourself by misuse of the law and by negative thinking. The marvelous and wonderful truth to learn is that you forgive yourself on the basis of a scientific mental law which is that your subconscious mind automatically reverses its action toward you when you begin to think the right way. 
It makes no difference whether you are an alcoholic, dope fiend, mugger, thief, rapist, murderer, or sadist. The law of your subconscious does not hold any grudge against you. Neither does it react negatively anymore once you have made a sincere decision to become a transformed man and to practice and live the truths of God, which are the same yesterday, today, and forever. All our derelictions, sins, errors, crimes, hostilities, and resentments are wiped out when we change our hearts and acknowledge that the love and harmony of God reign supreme in our lives. When divine love, divine harmony, and divine peace dominate your mind and heart, the law of your subconscious, being compulsive, will compel you to express the qualities and attributes of God and all your ways will be ways of pleasantness, and all your paths will lead to peace. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark. Philippians 3.13 Points to Remember 1. All over the world today, men and women of various religious beliefs are awakening to the tremendous therapeutic results following the application of mental and spiritual laws. 2. All healings take place according to the belief of the individual or that of his doctor or practitioner. The subconscious mind is the creative medium and the healer of the body. Whatever the conscious mind impresses on the subconscious, the latter faithfully reproduces. 3. The mother of a taxi driver began to read the power of your subconscious mind and realized that she had been constantly fearing and expecting to be crippled with arthritis because her mother and grandmother had been afflicted with this disease. She changed her attitude and began to affirm regularly, systematically and conscientiously that the cosmic energizer within her, which is the infinite healing presence, was flowing through her as harmony, vitality and wholeness, and that she was energized and transformed by the healing presence. She also pictured herself as walking and doing all the things she would do, were she whole and perfect. Her son kept praying for her also, claiming that divine love, peace and harmony saturated the mind and heart of his mother. His mental image, which he constantly viewed, was his mother at home, vital, alive, and quickened by the Spirit. His image agreed with his affirmation, and the so-called miracle happened. All the deposits were dissolved, and she walks freely and joyously now. 4. A mother whose five-year-old son had paroxysmal attacks of asthma and whose medicine did not always succeed in suppressing them, decided to call on the infinite healing presence within her and the boy. Several times a day she sat still, immobilized her attention, and in a passive, receptive frame of mind, imagined her little boy saying to her, Mom, God healed me, I feel wonderful. She did this over and over again until she felt the naturalness and reality of it all. It was a vivid, realistic drama in her mind. At the end of a month's time, he was completely free and bubbling over with enthusiasm. 5. The Cosmic Energizer is the Life Principle, or Infinite Healing Presence, which animates all people. If you wish to pray for a friend or relative thousands of miles away, there is no time or space in mind. Spirit is omnipresent. And if you wish to help your friend, go within yourself and contemplate the wholeness, beauty, vitality, intelligence and power of the infinite and claim that what is true of God is true of your friend. Do this until you become quiet and relaxed and feel that that is all you can do for the present. Later on, when you feel led to pray, Repeat the prayer process as if you were doing it for the first time. Each time you are penetrating deeper into your subconscious mind, as well as that of your friend, 
and he will experience a resurrection of what you feel and believe. 6. A mother whose child was dying of fever and who failed to respond to medication withdrew all thought of fever and bodily conditions. She sat down by the child and affirmed with faith and confidence, God's river of peace saturates the whole being of my child. The vitalizing, healing, harmonizing power of God is made manifest in her mind and body now. She continued for about one half hour and the child's temperature became normal. She asked for food and her dog to play with. The subconscious mind of the child was impregnated with the truths affirmed by the mother and immediate results followed. 7. The first step in mental and spiritual healing is not to be afraid of disease or condition. The second step is to come to the conclusion that the condition is but a product of negative thinking, which will have no power to continue its existence. The third step is to exalt the healing power of the cosmic energizer within. This attitude of mind will stop the production of all toxins in you or in the person for whom you are praying. 8. A minister brought about a wonderful healing of his wife's tubercular condition by meditating on one of the verses of the Bible and reiterating it over and over again until it became embodied in his subconscious mind and that of his wife. He turned within as if addressing the infinite presence and affirmed, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. John 11.41 He kept on thanking the infinite for his wife's miraculous healing, knowing that the grateful heart is always close to God. A complete healing of the tubercular condition took place. 9. The master key to spiritual healing is to refrain from thinking of symptoms and conditions, but to think of the living spirit within, which is the God presence, and then to affirm that the love, peace, harmony, joy, wholeness, vitality, and intelligence of the cosmic energizer animates, sustains, restores, and heals the person for whom you pray. You should also imagine the person as the person ought to be, happy, joyous, whole, vital, and in perfect condition. Your mental image must always agree with your affirmation. You can pray this way as often as you deem necessary, and according to your faith will you see results. 10. An alcoholic felt guilty and feared death. When it was explained to him that he creates his own heaven and hell, he felt relieved. He learned the law of forgiveness and realized that there was no one punishing him but himself and that the grudges, peeves and resentments he harbored were poisoning himself because whatever he was thinking about others, he was creating in his own life, since thought is creative. He decided to forgive himself and others and he meant it. Love came into his soul and peace into his mind. He felt he was on the right side of God and that all was forgiven. A remarkable healing followed and he left the hospital in a few days. He is a transformed man today. He discovered that self-forgiveness is heaven, mind at peace, and self-condemnation is hell, restriction and bondage. 11. The law of forgiveness is a scientific law of mind. Your mind is a principle, and the minute you begin to use it the right way, there is an automatic response of your subconscious mind to correspond with your conscious direction and contemplation. This is why you read in the 100th Psalm, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 105 The principles of chemistry, mathematics, electricity, etc. hold no grudges against you because you misused them. The minute you use these principles in the right way, right results follow. This is why even murderers, as well as alcoholics, thieves and dope addicts who have an intense desire to become new men in God, 
discover that the past is forgotten and remembered no more, the minute they begin to fill their subconscious with the truths of God. Perfunctory prayer won't do this, but when a real inner transformation takes place and you possess a hunger and thirst to do the right thing, then this seeming miracle takes place. A new beginning is a new end. 12. Forgive until 70 times 7 is a figurative biblical expression, which means your life should be dominated by a constant attitude of forgiving or giving for. Continue supplanting negative thoughts with constructive, harmonious thoughts, and then you are constantly forgiving yourself. Your thoughts about another are also your thoughts about yourself. You are the only thinker in your world, and your thought is definitely creative. You and you alone are responsible for the way you think. Whatever you think or wish for another, you are creating in your own body, experiences, conditions, and events. It behooves you to forgive 70 times 7. 13. All our shortcomings and derelictions are completely forgiven when we become dominated by divine love, harmony, and peace. Then the law of our subconscious responds accordingly, and since the law of our mind is compulsive, we find ourselves compelled to ways of pleasantness and to paths of peace. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 105 How the Cosmic Energizer Can Change Your Life In my experience extending over a great many years, I've found that the reason so many people do not get ahead is that they feel guilty about events and experiences earlier in their lives and that self-criticism and self-condemnation block the flow of the Cosmic Energizer in their pursuit of happiness. I have also discovered that those men and women who have come to a decision to forgive themselves and others invariably blossom forth in a wonderful way and have begun to lead what I like to call charmed lives. Everything they sincerely desire to accomplish comes to fruition in divine order. Self-condemnation brings failure and misery. Self-forgiveness brings happiness, peace and triumphant living. Understand the word sin. The word sin is from a Greek word meaning to miss the mark. When the Greek archers failed to hit the bull's eye, it was said that they had sinned or had missed the mark. Your goal, desire, objective or ideal is the mark for which you're aiming. Failure to reach your goal or to attain your objective is to sin. You're really sinning when you fail to express health, wealth, peace of mind and true expression. How she forgave herself and found happiness. Recently, a young woman from Georgia came to Los Angeles and accepted a good position with the government. In talking with her, I found that she was very shy, timid and somewhat introspective. She complained that there were no men where she worked and that she wanted to meet the right man and marry him. She wanted a home and to love and be loved. This young woman was sinning in the true meaning of the word because she failed to realize her desire in life. She reversed her attitude. At my suggestion, she began to feel wanted, needed, and appreciated. Frequently during the day, she would silently affirm, I am wanted, needed, loved, cared for, and appreciated. She began to imagine that she was being invited by a wonderful man to dine in the best restaurants and that she was being escorted by him to concerts, movies and operas. She wrote down on a memo pad all her desires. Frequently during the day she would go over this list, knowing that gradually all her requests would become engraved in her subconscious mind and would come to pass. She attended one of my classes which I gave in Costa Mesa and there met a wonderful engineer who fell in love with her. 
He took her to the best restaurants in town and to many theatrical productions. He presented her with a new automobile as a prenuptial gift, and the author had the pleasure of performing the marriage ceremony. The deeper currents of her mind responded to her disciplined imagination and fulfilled her heart's desire in divine order. She's now leading a happy and charmed life full of wonders. The word forgives means to give for. She gave herself the mood of fulfilled desire for the feeling of lack, loneliness and limitation. She hit the mark by realizing her goals in life and ceased to sin. You have the power to forgive yourself. You have the power to forgive yourself for all the errors, shortcomings and mistakes of your past by deciding to change your thoughts and keep them changed. The moment you begin to think constructively, harmoniously, peacefully and lovingly based on eternal truths which never change, your subconscious will immediately respond to your constructive thoughts and imagery, and the past will be forgotten and remembered no more. A new beginning is a new end. There is no time or space in the mind principle, and the minute you decide to transform your life by filling your subconscious with life-giving patterns, the cosmic energizer cleanses your subconscious and you become free. The life principle, God, never punishes. We punish ourselves instead by negative thinking and the misuse of the laws of life. Ignorance is the only sin, and all the punishment and misery of the world is the result. He was blocking the flow of energy. Recently, I talked to a man who was poverty-stricken and who was also very jealous and envious of the wealth and success of those around him. He said that he had joined a certain religious group and was saved. However, he remained poor, sick and needy. Obviously, he had not forgiven himself. I explained to him that he must demonstrate his faith, as we are always demonstrating and manifesting that in which we believe. I explained to him that God, the Living Spirit Almighty, the Life Principle, was within him and that this infinite intelligence would respond to his call upon it. Accordingly, he began to affirm with understanding that God is my instant and everlasting supply and support, meeting all my needs instantaneously at all times everywhere. When thoughts of lack came to his mind, he would immediately supplant the negative thoughts with his constant affirmation, God is my instant and everlasting supply and support. Gradually, his mind became conditioned to the real source of all things, and the cosmic energizer began to flow on his behalf, giving him new vitality, energy, creative ideas, and a new position with a wonderful income. The energy of the infinite flows in response to the eternal truths of life. His latest comment to me was, I have cast the spell of God around me and it is wonderful. Your power to be, to do and to have. You have the capacity to embrace an idea, to induce the mood of it and to weave it into the fabric of your mind through feeling. When you sense your oneness with your desire, the Cosmic Energizer moves on your behalf and brings your desire to pass. This is the creative law operating in you. Such knowledge works wonders in your life. How a new idea transformed his life. Some time ago, I interviewed a man who had failed in business and who had lost considerable money in the stock market which his family sorely needed. He told me that he had to repent. He was feeling depressed and was full of self-condemnation, which, I explained to him, was one of the most destructive of human emotions. His mental attitude was sending psychic pus throughout his entire system, debilitating the entire organism and making him a sort of mental wreck. I pointed out to him that the word repent means to change your thought along constructive lines and to keep it changed, 
and that to forgive means to identify yourself with your aim or ideal in life. He listened carefully and said to himself, I can use this knowledge. He began to realize that all he had to do was to dwell on the idea of success and prosperity, and as he did so, the subjective power would compel him to do all things necessary to become a success. He began to meditate on the idea of success and prosperity prior to sleep each night. He would think of what success and prosperity meant to him, and that the infinite was always successful in all undertakings, whether planet, tree, or cosmos. He dwelt on the fact that the infinite was within him, and that he was born to win and to succeed in life, that he was successful in his relationships with others and in his chosen field, and that God's riches were constantly available to him. He proceeded to impress his subconscious every night by affirming, Success is mine now, wealth is mine now, repeating these words slowly and quietly for five or ten minutes before he went to sleep. In the sleepy state the mind is more receptive and passive, and it is easier to impregnate the subconscious at that time. The sequel is interesting. All of a sudden, he felt a desire to take a course in public speaking and business management, plus additional courses in investments in the stock market. Today, he is a very successful broker and has a wonderful income. A detective leads a charmed life. Recently, I gave some special lectures at the Church of Religious Science in Dallas, Texas, during a conversation with a detective in the hotel, he told me that he had been shot at least 20 times, sometimes at close range, but that each time he had had a miraculous escape. Either the gun had jammed or the gunman had misfired, and the bullet meant for him was always deflected from its mark. His constant prayer, morning and night, is, The whole armor of God surrounds me, I bear a charmed life, God is my hiding place, and God encompasses me with songs of deliverance. This is his favorite prayer. By repetition, faith and expectancy he has engraved indelibly in his subconscious mind the conviction that God's love renders him impervious to all harm, and the cosmic energizer responds according to his belief. Transform your life with mental and spiritual food. Wisdom and understanding and the abundant life consist neither in eating meat nor in drinking coffee, nor yet in abstaining from eating and drinking either of these. You can lead an abstemious and ascetic life and be wise, strong, healthy and wealthy. Or you can be married and the father of ten children eat ham, drink coffee, and still be illumined, inspired, successful, and prosperous. Wisdom, which is an awareness of the presence of God within you, knows there is no particular virtue in living apart from the world and eating nuts, fruits, etc. Others enjoy life, eat what they like, and lead the abundant life, feasting on the truths of God and all things good. Man can eat the choicest food and yet be hungry for love, guidance, health and inspiration. Man is what he eats mentally and spiritually. Feast on the goodness and the guidance of God in the land of the living. Saturate your mind with God's river of peace and love. Claim you are inspired from on high and make it a habit to pour out the sunshine of God's love on everyone. As you practice reiterating these truths, your whole world, body, mind, business and home life will magically melt into the image and likeness of your contemplation. Why be concerned with non-essentials, with trivial things such as what you shall eat or what you shall drink? Why strain at gnats and swallow camels, mountains of ignorance, fear and superstition? The truth that changed his life. While talking with a hard-working man, I learned that he was very conscientious, consistently followed the tenets of his church, 
tithed, gave to the poor, visited hospitals and was good and kind to his family, yet he suffered from all manner of troubles. His house was burned down, his two cars were stolen, he had had two major operations, he was accused falsely, and he found his wife unfaithful, giving birth to a child not his own, which proved to be a great shock to him. I asked him a simple question, what is your concept of God, knowing before I asked that the answer he would give would reveal the cause of all his troubles. He believed that God was a being separate from himself, up in space somewhere, and that we are here to suffer, and that God sends sickness, pain and suffering to test us. He actually believed God was punishing him for sins he had committed years ago. Having such a weird, ignorant concept of God, he experienced the result of such a belief in the form of all kinds of difficulties and troubles. I explained to him the thing that really matters is his real, subjective belief, the sincere belief deep in his heart, and that he would always demonstrate his deep-seated belief. That is why Dr. Phineas Parkhurst Quimby in 1848 said, Man is belief expressed. This man, conceiving of a god afar off in the skies, had a god of caprice, possessing all the whims of a human being. With such a concept, he was like the businessman who said to the writer, I would be all right if God would leave me alone. His new concept of the cosmic energizer. I suggested that he go back to the true concept of God, given in Isaiah 9.6. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Three times a day for about five or six minutes, he began to affirm feelingly, I exalt God in the midst of me, mighty to heal and restore me. I know God is absolute bliss, absolute harmony, infinite intelligence, boundless love, omnipotent supreme, the only presence, power, cause, and substance. I know God is love, and love can't do anything unloving. I know God is love, and love can't do anything unloving. I know and believe that the will of God for me is a greater measure of joy, happiness, love, peace, success, harmony, perfect health, and the life more abundant. I claim, feel, and know that the vitality, tireless energy, wholeness and beauty and joy of the infinite animate and sustain me, and that God's love fills my soul. I give thanks for God's riches, which are forever active, forever present, unchanging and eternal. This man had a wonderful voice, and every morning and evening he would sing these truths, knowing by frequent habitation of the mind, that they would enter into his subconscious and become manifest. It has now been over three months since he started this prayer technique and his whole life has been transformed. His health is wonderful. He has remarried and entered into the spirit of forgiveness. He now believes implicitly in a God of love. God's love has dissolved everything unlike itself in his mind, body, business and home. Wonders happen as you pray in the right way. Points to remember. 1. The sense of guilt holds many people back as it blocks the flow of cosmic energy into their lives, robbing them of vitality, enthusiasm and expansion in life. Self-condemnation brings failure and misery. Self-forgiveness brings joy, happiness and prosperity. 2. The word sin means to miss the mark. You are sinning in life when you fail to lead a full, happy, prosperous and successful life. 3. A shy, timid and fearful young woman was lonesome, frustrated and unhappy. She reversed her attitude and began to claim she was wanted, needed, appreciated and loved. She disciplined her imagination and began to imagine and feel she was being escorted to fashionable restaurants, theatres and musicals. She also prayed that she would attract the right man. 
The deeper currents of her mind brought all these things to pass in divine order. 4. To forgive is to give for. You have the power to forgive yourself by changing your thoughts according to universal principles and keeping them changed. The moment you do this, there is an automatic response from your subconscious mind, and the past is forgotten and remembered no more. A new beginning is a new end. 5. You do not solve the problem of poverty or sickness by joining a church, a cult, or a group of any kind. You must demonstrate your faith. We are all manifesting in our lives what we really believe. Turn to the source of all blessings and claim that God, the Cosmic Energizer, is your instant and everlasting supply and support at all times, and you will get a response. 6. When you sense your oneness with your desire, the Cosmic Energizer will move on your behalf and bring your desire to pass. 7. The word repent means to change your thoughts and to think according to eternal verities, the truths which never change. A man focused his attention on two ideas prior to sleep, success and wealth, repeating these two words to his subconscious while lulling himself to sleep. He activated the latent power of his subconscious and went up the ladder of triumph and achievement along all lines. 8. A detective lives a charmed life through the constant use of this prayer. The whole armor of God surrounds me. I bear a charmed life. God is my hiding place, and he encompasses me with songs of deliverance. By constant repetition, he has impregnated his subconscious mind, and he is impervious to all harm. 9. You are what you eat mentally and spiritually. You can eat the choicest food and still be hungry for love, peace, harmony and health. God doesn't care whether you feast or fast. Feast on the truths of God and whatever you eat physically will be transmuted into beauty, symmetry, order and proportion. 10. You can be very good from a conventional standpoint. You can observe the rules and regulations of your church and be kind to your family. But you must remember, it is the belief deep down in your heart that is made manifest. If you believe that God is punishing you or sending sickness or disease, or that the will of God for you is something downright unpleasant, you will experience the result of your belief. Actually, you are punishing yourself because you are belief expressed. Get a new concept of a God of love and believe that God's will for you is something glorious and magnificent and something beyond your fondest dreams and it will be done unto you as you believe. One man who had been suffering the tortures of the damned because of his false belief about God reversed his attitude and enthroned a God of love. He thereby transformed his whole life into one of harmony, health and peace. The Divine Plan for Lifetime Abundance Love of God, which means giving all honor, allegiance, loyalty and devotion to the cosmic energizer within you, recognizing it as supreme and omnipotent and the endless source of supply, is a type of love which consists of a healthy, reverent, wholesome respect for the divinity within. Your higher self will cause you automatically to love others, and love is the fulfillment of everything. The more love and goodwill you exude, the greater is your share of God's abundance. Your capital consists of the infinite ideas that are in divine mind, and God's ideas unfold within you. Man, knowing his relation to the cosmic energizer, becomes a channel depending less and less on outer media and more and more on the source. We can turn to the inexhaustible fountain within, for God is able to make all grace abound toward you.